So today's project is we are gonna fill this beautiful planter box that my husband made. Um, so we built this all out of um, pallets that we broke down. We stained it on the outside. Um, it's filled like two thirds of the way up with um, a soil that I got locally called sandy loam. Originally I was gonna use just the sandy loam, um, but it's way too dense and heavy. Um, but anyway, so I'm putting um, Bonsai Jack gritty mix on top. I also took all of the um, crepe paper, crinkle paper that comes with um, Mountain Crest orders and we put some of that in there just kind of as filler. Um, it'll break down eventually. But then I also have, um, I have 28 more gallons, which we won't need that many, but I have a lot more um, soil that we're gonna put in here. We're gonna kind of mound the top. We're gonna channel our inner Laura Eubanks and kind of do her style of planting here. And this is real life, the kids are helping. Um, <laughs> we have some bigger rocks that we're gonna use on the top to make it interesting. We have some, um, this is kind of like a peachy, gray, I don't know, kind of um, rock that we'll use for top dressing. Thanks, Jane. And then um, I bought all of these plants. Um, it's currently the end of January. I bought all of these plants in March. No, no. I bought them all in October um, at the Arizona's Desert Botanical Garden. They do a an annual sale so I bought these at that sale and they've just been waiting for me to get this planter box made and planted um but yeah so that's what we're doing today we've got some golden barrel cactus a ferro cactus we've got the blue wave crassula there um uh, sedum burrito or burrow's tail I'm not sure which one I can't remember which one's pointy and then a ghost plant so this is kind of stretched out we haven't been getting quite enough light back here and then this little I don't know actually what it is. I just don't need to find the ID. But, um, but yeah, so we're gonna do that. And then we have these flats of um, just a variety of stuff really from Mountain Crest Gardens that we're going to plant in it and kind of do some cool little um, waves of succulents. And anyway, we'll just see what happens. Um, oh, one thing I forgot to mention, the blue inside here is actually gonna all be covered up, but we needed to, um, seal the interior so we just got some blue outdoor spray paint to do that so it's sealed and then at, if at some point the soil settles and you can actually see it then it'll be all pretty and blue so anyway we'll um have another update but that's what we've got for now what are you guys doing um, we're, we're, we're making the locks all blue you're making them all smooth mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so it's kind of hard to see, but we have the soil almost up to the edge and we have it kind of mounded, so it's fairly tall. It'll settle a little bit as we start planting and the more we water, but um, I think we're gonna add just a little bit more, but then go with that as far as soil goes. And then we'll start planting. Um, even though this is currently on a wall, I will probably try and make it so that it can be viewed from any side. Um, probably won't put like hanging plants in the back, but um, anyway, try and make it look good from about any angle. So um, yeah, next time you see it, there will be some plants in it. All right, so we've got these uh, ripple jade kind of in place. Next, I want to put in my big barrel cactus. I just want to show you what I'm doing for that. So um, I have two pair of nitrile gloves on, um, like double layered. So I don't normally wear gloves when I'm planting, uh, except when I'm dealing with cactus. Fortunately, all of the cactus I got, their spines are really big. So I'm probably not gonna get like little slivers in my hands. <laughs> Thanks, Henry. Um, but they're obviously pokey. And the thing that I have found to be best for that is the nitrile gloves. And like I said, I just double them up to make sure I'm extra protected and that has worked super duper well so um so there you go all right so i've got the barrel cactus in now and um you'll notice they're all at the, they're kind of tipped one way or another um so i'm pretty sure it's laura eubanks 
probably most of the advice I'm going to give you today is from Laura Eubanks at Design for Serenity. Um, but they are tipped, and that does a couple things. One, it kind of makes it look more interesting in the design. But two, it prevents water from building up on top of the um, cactus and causing rot. So anyway, it looks good, and it's good for the for the uh, cactus. So I've kind of been doing these in sets of three. The other stuff that's going in won't be quite so um, even, I guess, like that. But um, trying to kind of stick to odd numbers and just placing elements um, throughout the design. So instead of just like clumping all the barrel cactus together or all of the ripple jades together, um, kind of spreading them out so there's some cohesion between the different elements and I have no idea what we're going to do next so uh, this will be an adventure but so far pretty happy with it and I, I know I probably mentioned this earlier but I kind of created a mound right with the soil when I started and the reason for that is one again it makes your design look more interesting but it also helps the water drain off better so those plants on the top the water will flow away from the roots a lot more quickly um, so whether you're planting in a pot or in the ground, um, you want to have you want to have some height to your soil. You don't want to just plant everything flat, but um, have kind of some mounded areas to make things a little more interesting. So the next thing I decided to add was some rock. Again, Laura Eubanks, uh, you can thank her for that idea. Um, I'm sure she's not the only one, but we really are kind of following her design style or method here. So hi, Laura. Um, and just added a few rocks um, just for some visual interest. Henry wanted to be in the video. Henry, can you say hi? Hi. And um, and then I will... Jane, do you want to say hi? No. No. Um, <laughs> so then we'll add some more plants in now. And then later we'll also add some other uh, different kind of rocks as well, but smaller. All right, so I'm just looking through kind of my plant selection here to figure out what I want to put in next. Um, so we have the green already from the Ripple Jade, and then we also have um, the pinks from the rock. So I'm thinking I want to do something that kind of contrasts both of those. Um, so I'm thinking to do the, um, some of these blue echeverias and, um, maybe some of this crassula perforata and yeah, I want to, I want to put this, the, I think this is called Tokyo Joy. I want to put this kind of along the edge and have it run over. We're actually going to have quite a few trailing, um, succulents in this. So we'll get to that in a few minutes, but there you go. All right, a little update. Just added in a couple echeverias. I think I'm gonna do some of the, whatever this guy is, um, over here on the corner by the barrel cactus. So I'm gonna put that in now. And I might figure out if I'm gonna do, where I'm gonna do any other trailing succulents, just so I can kind of get a feel for those. And then, I don't know, we'll just keep going. All right, so I have this guy that I want to put in on the end, but it has been in that pot so long that it is very, very root bound, and those roots are super compact and anyway, very hard to break up. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I have this, um, I think it's called a Hana knife that a reader sent me actually, um, probably a couple years ago. And oddly, I didn't really have a use for it at the time because I was doing stuff that was so small. Um, but since I've started working with larger plants and did a little bit of outdoor planting last year, um, this thing is really come in handy. It's really awesome. So um, it's kind of a spade, I guess, but it has, as you can see, um, very sharp edges. Um, so it just slices through stuff like it's no big deal. Um, so I don't know if I can do this one-handed, but... Basically what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to just come in here and I'm going to kind of like dissect this thing. Um, so I want just a small piece and I'm just going to slice mostly, I mostly want to cut through the roots. Okay, so I was able to cut out a pretty good chunk. I'm not going to worry about loosening up this root ball, um, mostly because 
this plant. So its nickname is um, Rapunzel plant. And I still need to get the Latin name. But um, anyway, because it's all like individual sticks, I want it to stay kind of clumped together. I don't want to have to deal with the individual little pieces, which I have some down there. But anyway, so with the knife, I was able to just cut right through and um, get this nice little clump. And we're going to stick it in right here by the barrel cactus. All right, so I got that in there. Um, you'll notice like some of the original root balls kind of showing still. Um, when I'm finished up, I'm going to go back over and add like a top dressing to everything. So I may add some more soil over that or I might just throw the top dressing on it um, either way. But my goal with this was to kind of have it hang over the edge. So I feel like that's working. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and add a few more succulents along the edge and then come back in and fill in like some of this part um, and also the other side because we haven't really done anything with the other side yet. Here I added in a little Portulacaria afra variegata. Um, this is actually, as my son calls it, his birthday plant. Um, we got it at the Desert Botanical Garden sale also. Um, so while I was there, so we went to that sale in October and my birthday is in November and I asked my husband if he would get me this for my birthday. <laughs> so anyway, I was picking this out and um, my son was with me and he's like, well, I want to, I want a birthday succulent too. His birthday's not till March, but um, anyway, he picked out Portulacaria Afra Variegata. Uh, which is great because I actually really love it and I think it's going to look awesome in here. So don't worry, I did get his approval before I put this in, um, but he has been very um, diligent about caring for this plant. So it's in pretty good shape. Um, yeah, let's keep going. So I added three more types of plants. So we added this um, Graptivaria variety and then a little bit of that Tokyo Sun that I kind of showed you earlier. So I kind of like that this mimics the color of the barrel cactus, um, but it'll just get kind of like, it's just bright greenish yellow and almost looks mossy. It'll just really fill in nicely um, in the spring. And then I'm just kind of, you know, doing a little bit of these waves of color. Um, so we did the pink kind of Graftivaria here, and then we have the uh, Moonstones Pachyvaria. Pocketfitum, I can't remember. Um, anyway, so the pink moonstone's here. So we're getting more filled in. I'm not trying to pack it in like really, really tight. I would like for these to grow, um, but I also want the arrangement to look finished and uh, intentional. So I will leave some areas where we'll just add in um, some color rock. Um, again, very... Laura Eubanks-esque, um, and that's kind of the look we're going for. So um, anyway, we'll see kind of how I feel as we keep adding more plants. So I think I need to do back in here and then some back um, on this side a little bit and maybe around here also. I wanted to just show you what I'm doing with each of the plants before I put them in the arrangement. Um, so I am just crushing the root ball and just really softening it up, breaking it up. Um, cause you don't want to just stick it in with that really hard soil. Um, you want the, the loose, the roots to be pretty loose, um, so that they can start to spread more easily. Um, so just kind of breaking things up there, getting some of the soil off. I'm not as concerned about getting all the soil off as I am just softening up the root ball. And then when I'm placing it in here, I'm just kind of digging a little hole and then bringing um, some soil in around it until it's kind of where I want it. Um, so that's kind of the process that I'm doing for each of the plants. Um, these little barrel cactus actually had a pretty deep root system, so those I was mostly holding onto the roots as I stuck it in. Um, the bigger one didn't have very deep roots, so it is just set on top there but the, the roots were um, already pretty like spread out and broken up, so um, yeah. All right, so I told you about this, my little birthday cactus. Um, what I didn't tell you in the video is this beautiful beast cost $100.
which was actually, I feel like it was a really good deal. And it's a really good specimen. It's healthy. I like the shape of it. Um, but it also is supposed to grow fairly fast. So in the spring, um, I'm planning on giving it, you know, some fertilizer and hopefully it'll just get even more massive. Um, but I am going to cut off this piece right here on the side and I'm going to add it to, um, into the planter box. So again, I just have that, um, Hana knife. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Probably should have looked it up. And I am going to um, just slice through. It has this little, like a little bit of a gap right in here. And um, I'm just going to slice it off. And that's, that's going to be it. And I'll show you that when I'm done. So there is the beautiful piece um, from the plant. I put back on my double layers of gloves. Um, so even though this doesn't have like very many, I don't know, it has a few, let's see where it goes. It has a few big spines here and there, but mostly it just has these little glockids and those are kind of, I don't know, they're kind of a pain. But anyway, so definitely um, want to be safe there. So um, you can see the end is very raw, juicy. It's gonna take a few days for that to callus. And then you can see here, I did not do, this was not like one clean slice off of there. Um, I actually ended up having to break it a little bit um, because of the way the plant was shaped. And also the knife is not straight, it's curved a little bit. So that also made it a little tricky. Very sharp, but the curve, um, anyway, kind of made it a challenge. Um, oh, there you go, you can see how much the pot was too. And anyway, so I'll just let that um, callus over and just for aesthetic sake, I will turn that so that it's up against the wall. Um, but now I have two plants from my $100 plant and I'm not going to put this in yet, but I am going to save a spot for it. It's going to kind of go right here in the middle-ish and hopefully it'll just kind of create this nice little wave um, along there as it gets bigger. So I started adding in some Sempervivum hefelii, a few different varieties. Um, one of my favorites is this purple haze. Um, color is not super accurate here maybe, but it does have like a purplish base and then kind of this whitish greenish tinge to it. Um, so there's that. And then um, over on the back here we added in I added in <laughs> um, um, a Worthia variety. I need to add a couple more of these um, sedum burrito cuttings and then um, this sedum spurium tricolor. And this thing um, is incredibly prolific. So um, I'm guessing by midsummer it'll have to be cut back because I think it'll just take over everything here. Um, but I kind of wanted it there to fill in the space. So gonna do its job. And then over on this side, we added in some more Sempervivum hefelii. Um, again, just a couple varieties. I'm kind of going in those like ribbons, but I don't want it to be like super perfect. Um, yeah, so I mean, it's really starting, I mean, it, even just with the first few plants, it was starting to fill in, but um, definitely a lot more filled in right now so we'll see what happens next all right so i added a little bit of the ghost plant here just a couple cuttings and then added in um a few more of the sedum burrito back here um i had some portulacaria afra just a, like tiny cuts of it we added in um we added in this little ripsalis and then let's see we did some let's see uh, the Crassula perforata variegata, some ripsal ripsalis, um, some horthias, and then in the front, um, added a little bit of the ripsalis there, and a little bit of this sedum Tokyo sun, 
and I'm feeling pretty good about it. So I think we're gonna call it good there as far as the plants go. I did put this guy in, um, right in, just put it where I want it to be. Um, I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna pull it out or just not water and let it go that way. But um, anyway, I feel pretty good about it. Um, we still need to add the top dressing and rock, but um, I've been at this most of the day, so we're probably gonna do that another time. All right, so here's the garden. It's been about a week since it was planted, maybe a week and a half. And now today I'm going to add the rock or the top dressing. Um, this is something that's totally fine to do the day of. I just ran out of time and then I got sick, so it's been about a week. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna yeah. add the top dressing. I wanted to show you what the end of this cactus looks like where I cut off the little arm and it is drying out quite nicely and anyway so that will eventually I mean it'll just keep kind of drying out a little more and it'll be just fine but we'll move it to the back so it's not as visible because it's not super pretty but it all looks good and then Let's see if I can show you what this guy is doing without getting too poked. So you can see here, um, I have actually, I have watered this a little bit, but you can see that it is pretty dried out. There's a little fresh spot. I actually think that's from just now pulling it out of the ground. Oh my goodness. And can you see that? There's a mealybug right there. That little white guy. <gasps> There's mealybugs. Might be a few mealybugs on there. Okay, so bad news. Oh, there's mealybugs all over this thing. Oh, folks. So this is going to get an alcohol treatment before we do anything else. Um, that is no bueno. So I'm going to check the mother plant too, see if it's on there or see if it is from um, one of these other plants. But that's not good. And even if you look right up in here, you can see some damage and stuff going on. So we're getting a mealybug treatment today. So we got the top dressing added. I decided just to go with one color. Uh, you know, we've been channeling, or I've been channeling, I guess, my inner Laura Eubanks. And normally she would do a couple colors, but I feel like I just want the succulents to stand out. And we've got enough things going on with the succulents that I just wanted the top dressing to just help it look finished off. So there you go. Um, this is, I think it's about a quarter inch size, and I just went in, and Henry, can you show him the scoop? We used this scoop to get it in between everything. We also used the little scoop, um, off and on, just to get it in between all the little cracks and crevices between the plants, um, getting in around the barrel cactus so that we didn't get poked. Uh, scoop is definitely handy for that. And we tried not to get rocks on top of the succulents too much. We brushed a few off. Um, you'll see this Tokyo Sun maybe doesn't look as full as it used to. Um, it'll perk right back up. It just is that it has rocks kind of in and over and through it, but it helps it look like it's actually growing right from there. Um, these semps got a little, uh, they got a bunch on them, but again, they'll grow. And maybe we'll have a, a two-year-old gardening day and, or not two, I guess, four-year-old gardening day and have him help pick out some of the rocks from in between all the little rosette leaves. But overall, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, after the little mealybug fiasco, I moved uh, this big guy from over here to here, not having anything to do with the mealybugs, but just so that everything looked a little bit more balanced. And there you go. So I'm pretty happy with how it's going. I guess how it went. Pretty happy with how it all went down and how it looks right now. So that will be our finished product. And it'll be awesome to see how much it grows over the summer as we start watering more and fertilizing. And it's gonna start getting more sun pretty soon here. So it'll be pretty awesome.